Let us pray. Loving God, you call us by name and offer healing and forgiveness. Open our hearts this day that we might hear your word and never be the same. Amen. Take as our jumping off point this morning, the lyrics from a song by the country music duo, Big and Rich. That's just for you, Rich. Been driving all over the town on my cell phone, wearing it out, and I finally tracked you down. Everybody says you're the man, the final piece to my master plan. You've got my world in the palm of your hand. Well, I know that you got it. Come on and just sell it. I got the cash in my pocket. You know I got to get it. Hey, mister, won't you sell me a fake ID? There's a band in the bar that I'm dying to see. I got my money. You got what I need. Hey, mister, won't you sell me a fake ID? Feel free to line dance. In Capernaum today, there's a man in the house that people are dying to see. Who is this man? Everywhere he goes, they track him down. And everywhere he goes, he holds them in the palm of his hand. Casting out demons. No healing is too great or too small. From leprosy to Simon's mother-in-law's fever. Everywhere he goes, he draws a crowd hoping he's got what they need. Today, it's a paralytic and four friends. And I think we should all have and be friends like this. So let's rephrase it. Today we have four friends and a paralytic. Who are these friends? Who is our paralytic? When I moved, which was seldom, it was only because my friends who nag and sustain me carried me out to lie in the evening and look at the stars. My friends who would never let up on me. I was bound to my bed. My bed was a prison. Feeling that life was unbearably stale and a dull, bitter taste on the edge of my mouth. But they were persistent, my friends, and insisted, carried me, vaguely protesting through the streets of Capernaum, straight to the house where Jesus was teaching. When we came to the house, surrounded by fans, the devout and devoted, who hung on his words, showed up every time he appeared in town, hearts on their sleeves and faith on their lips, move back, they said. There's no room for you here, they insisted, these pious and devout ones. So delighted to cling to his words that they never looked twice at my pain or my desire. Who are these people? Check their ID. If it says organ donor, do not get your hopes up for a heart. So devoted to being devout, they disregard this group of friends bearing their bedridden buddy. So much for the followers of this Messiah, I thought to myself, let's go home. I said to my friends, if that's how it is, I want no part of it. Leave me to my bed and my isolation. And the four friends, no ID and they can't get a backstage pass, but they do find the back stairs and they unroofed the roof. They lowered me down in the midst of the hubbub, mud and thatch and me coming down on the crowd. Jesus, astonished, brushed the flecks of debris from his hair and looked up at my friends. What faith you have, he said, which I thought was the kindest construction he could put on their rudeness, which would not be deterred bringing me to his side. Maybe not rudeness, but determined faith. And what faith indeed. Who is this guy lowered down into the mosh pit by his friends? Not a word about his faith, no name, no age, no address, no height. But I'm sure his friends could give maybe a slight estimate about his weight since they carried him all that way. His ID is determined by his affliction. Then Jesus looked down at me, lying there on my pallet, wishing to God I were home in my house. 
But he looked straight to me, and I thought, can it be? Can it be that he'll heal me? But what he said was, my child, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Well, I thought, that's lovely. Here I am lying paralyzed, unable to move, unable to function, unable to work, unable to love. And he prattles on about sin and forgiveness. I ask you, is our unidentified paralytic alone in that response? Forgiveness? Someone is seeking healing and you're offering forgiveness? What kind of compassion is that? Is that what they came for? For so many people, sin and repentance and even forgiveness have been distorted and abused and even made toxic. And that is a source of so much suffering because guilt and remorse and hardness of heart are toxic too. They're bad for our health and they make us toxic. In Mark's gospel, healing and forgiveness come as a box set, reminding us, particularly in the Bible, body and soul are inseparable. And that even as we honor all the human arts and sciences and their powers to heal and illumine our lives, God offers us a box set, a gospel box set, blessing us with the light of grace and a healing power beyond our own. Meanwhile, the Puritans, the letter of the law keepers, were sitting, standing by to sniff out heresy wherever they could find it, arguing with Jesus over what he had done. Who except God, they were saying, can forgive people's sins? Who are these guys? Jesus sees them for who they are. Jesus sees that hardness of heart. They came ready to be offended, more interested in being right. They believed they heard the blasphemy they wanted to hear. But Jesus never said it. Never said, I forgive you. Jesus spoke a living word of truth and grace. My child, your sins are forgiven. Back to the guy lowered into the mosh pit by his friends. I was thinking, all I asked to do was walk, just walk. And while he said those odd, remarkable words, my child, your sins are forgiven. The words hung there and haunted me and touched me and amazed me. No fake ID needed anymore. My child, me. My child, those words from this man who I'd never seen, my child, somehow bridging the infinite distance I had invented, reaching over the gulf, my child, till the distance diminished and the gulf disappeared. Astonished by mercy, I lay on my bed, my child, your sins are forgiven. Whatever that meant, whatever that means, maybe just the same thing that the distance I did not invent but could not avoid, guilt which I nurtured and could not be rid of, that odd, undeserving, the life without flavor, feeling a stranger among my friends, all of that was wiped out, abolished. Your son, your sins are forgiven, my child, my child. Lying at Jesus' feet, the argument raged on, disputing his right, his power, even to say, my child. Except now I knew his right, his power. I knew that his words were so strong they could hear me right into mercy. My child, my child. Somehow then Jesus ended the argument. I'll show you I have the power. So you can know, so you can believe. Some people didn't notice the first miracle, they will notice the second. Then he looked once again, looked straight at me, stand up, he said, pick up that bed and now walk. Friends, this is not about medical care in Bible times. Jesus came to help us know who God is. 
and who God wants us to be and the fullness and wholeness that God wants for our lives. I think at some point, each one of us has been stopped in our tracks, felt immobilized, paralyzed. We cripple ourselves, we get stuck, and we lose our sense of who we are. Driving all over town, wearing out our cell phones, tracking down pieces to our master plan. Up blind alleys, someone around every corner more than happy to sell us a fake ID. This story invites us just for a moment to lie at Jesus' feet in the healing presence of God, where brokenness and forgiveness and healing commingle. And to hear Jesus' liberating word of truth for us. For just a moment to lie at Jesus' feet and hear Jesus say to us, to you, my child, my child, and toss away your fake ID. And I thought, well, all right. I thought maybe now, now there's some reason for walking somewhere to go, some promise, some purpose, some promise of love. In this story, we discover for Jesus to offer healing without forgiveness would be to offer too little. Forgiveness is more than a moral construct for our society or a theological doctrine. It is the sacred grace that God gives us. The grace to heal, to heal that hardness of heart that paralyzes us. Grace that makes all things new, renewing us in body and in soul because we cannot separate those. To walk into every new day with its fear and freedom, its pain, its possibility, hearing Jesus say to us, my precious child, my lovely child, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And I picked up my bed, that damned bed which had carried me and I carried it and carried it on my back. And all they saw looking on was a poor man stumbling, rather feebly, rather weakly, out of the house. But my soul, oh my soul, friend, was leaping and dancing, leaping and dancing all the way home. Amen.